Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another episode of Monday Markets brought to you by the FTX app. Links available in the description below for all your spot mobile trading needs, portfolio tracking, all that good stuff. There's also a anti-liquidation guide that Donald and I have written. That's coming soon, available to subscribers. So if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and that guide will be in your hands soon, free of charge, of course. So let's look at the market. Uh, not a whole lot has changed since the last time. Uh, we have some, had some, some sort of weekly time frame developments. It's been a bit slow and droopy. Uh, it's still very much in this 18, 19K range, uh, but the weekly time frame is creeping lower. So that's kind of the most uh, recent development since the last video. If we look on the weekly time frame, we were discussing this sort of lowest close weekly level at 19.3, 19.2, uh, and the most recent weekly close uh, was below it. So we've had the lowest weekly close that we've had within this entire consolidation, market kind of just drooping lower. Uh, nothing crazy has happened structurally, but it is just kind of drifting and floating between this 18, 19k range, and the closes are getting uh, more bearish. I think the worst case scenario is that intraweek, uh, this kind of backside retest of these previous candle levels at 19.2, 19.5 end up acting as resistance and we get our real breakdown. Uh, that would certainly be shitty. Uh, as far as intra-week or kind of looking out for next week, what would be constructive, of course, is a close back above those structures. And we could make the case that this ends up being some sort of weekly, you know, failed breakdown, deviation, what have you. And a weekly close back above, we can at the very least target uh, the daily range midpoint and the weekly pivot at sort of 21k uh, and maybe even higher like i know these p price projections suck it's sort of 19 to 21k very narrow type of range but we are just dealing with those types of conditions so for the time being intraweek uh you know 19k is 19 to 19 3 to 19.5 is an area of resistance uh it's all kind of within the same range so i don't want to read into it too much but yeah lowest weekly close we've had in the range so far uh if this week is going to be strong has to at the very least nullify some of these preceding weekly closes and get back above 19.5 19.6 on a weekly closing basis even if it does that we have to be conservative given the price action and we still have this weekly range midpoint also daily range midpoint uh, as a pivot at 21k or thereabouts so the most optimistic thing to look forward to next week if the market recovers is acceptance back within the range in the form of a weekly close back above 19.5 and that will open the door for a push towards 21k uh, very narrow very tight but we have to deal with what we've got and that's what we've got on the daily time frame uh, more chop as you can imagine uh, the bigger range that we were dealing with uh, remains unchanged and uh, some of this price action has just been rough to be honest with you but same old same old highest close resistance at 22k lowest close support at 19k midpoint at 20.7 that same weekly pivot we talked about uh, and you can see the market's just been churning at support uh, which isn't something i generally like to rebuy or nothing that makes me optimistic depending on how you count it you know you've got one test and you know don would probably count this as more than one but whatever at the very least one two three and if you want to be really generous this is four uh, so even if you get a push into the range midpoint, if it ends up coming back into support, we're dealing with maybe the fourth, fifth, sixth test, whatever it may be. And I'm just not a huge fan of dry running structures like that. Uh, if we get something very impressively sort of impulsive to the downside that fails, so like a real wipe of the lows, uh, and then the next week ends up being some sort of very aggressive spring, then that becomes a tradable event and sort of resets the count for the level where it was six tests, but the fact that it failed to break down, you can kind of start from scratch again, you know, one, two, whatever, and the level becomes tradable. But in the absence of something that really pushes into the lows or makes this range look like it's going to expand to the downside, we are just dealing with congestion and churn at support. And, you know, that that that's not a cause for confidence for me at the very least. So intraweek bias, we sort of talked about the weekly levels. The most bearish scenario is 19.1 to 19.5-ish end up being some sort of underside retest and we nuke. Uh, I sure hope that doesn't happen. In the interim, if we do get relief from these levels, I still think you have to be responsible and trade at level to level and target sort of 20 0.7 21k or thereabouts as the range midpoint this market hasn't been particularly forgiving for people trading more than level to level or sort of holding swing targets or holding trend targets whatever it may be or waiting for breakouts so i think for the time being uh buy support sell resistance uh, just in this case the support is on its like fourth fifth sixth whatever test so i need to see something more in order to uh 
allow me to speculate, if you will, on the longer side. I mean, it, look, it's just complete chop at the level. No clear signals for me at the time being. Uh, we have some catalysts later this week, which we'll discuss, which could kind of push this thing around. Uh, but the range is clear. You know, if I were you, if you want a sort of distraction-free chart, I would just have those three aforementioned structures on the weekly time frame. They'll likely tell you all you need. And again, that is the lowest weekly close at 19.3. The lowest, you know, the level just above that at 19.5, 19.6. Uh, that's kind of the underside or short-term resistance. And if the market pops up, uh, I would look towards 20.5 to 21K. Uh, it's a very narrow range. We're currently at the underside. But again, we have to just take the market for what it is. And this is what we are dealing with. This is the kind of the, uh, kind of the range. And the first sign of strength, as I mentioned, would be a weekly close or at least daily strength above 19.5, 19.6. And then we can make a case for a retest of this aforementioned range midpoint. So that's BTC. Uh, still kind of just flirting with death, to be honest with you. Uh, but one level at a time. As far as ETH goes, um, not too much has changed for me personally. Uh, it's still at the same level of support and actually holding up decently well, all things considered, at this 1200 level. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a retest of that structure, given it was a very quick type of hit and run. Uh, in the short term, the levels of resistance that we're dealing with are this mini cluster that we talked about last week at about 1400. And then the more recent or the more kind of evident breakdown level is closer to 1400 1500 so again the market is just at that point where we're dealing with very narrow ranges uh, they're all, they're still being respected if you're trading breakouts having a very hard time uh, one level to the next is probably the most you can squeeze out from these conditions so kind of short-term range we have is between 1.2 and mid 1300s displayed as so uh, and the first sign of strength again would be at the very least the 1300 to 1400 trade and then reclaiming that we could po possibly go quite a bit higher but for the time being i'd rather just trade what the market's offering or at least only you know look at the relevant levels and for me that's 1200 to 1300 but the response hasn't been bad by any means so um more congestion there but doesn't look so terrible uh ETH btc has been kind of stagnant since we talked about it uh, if you'll recall we discussed this kind of range high to range low at 0.8 to sort of 0 0.6 uh, and the market's kind of finding some support at this range midpoint at 0.6 or close to 0.7 I should say it's yeah 0 0.8 0 0.6 with a 0.7 midpoint uh, that's where the dumping kind of slowed down a little bit and seen some relative strength in ETH or at least the market kind of slowing down it's very one-sided post-merge move so that's something to pay attention to but you know again it's at the range midpoint uh, I'm not going to get very clear signals from the range midpoint it's kind of just the mean uh, the extremes are the ones that generate signal for the most part so I'm not going to read into this too much uh, I really think what's driving prices unsurprisingly Still the risk and indices, and they're at very interesting points. If we look at the S&P, uh, it's in an area of monthly support, which I, I think it's okay. Uh, it's this monthly cluster. You'll recall that we discussed that length both on this channel and in Technical Roundup, the newsletter. Uh, it's sort of the 3,700-ish monthly cluster. It already did a very good job. It gave us a fresh bounce into the sort of 4K plus you know, 4,300 breakdown level, and now it's back at the support, and it's back looking very bearish, and it got back there very quickly. Um, maybe this support gives another bounce, but it doesn't look like a bottomy type of support to me. Uh, if we look on the weekly time frame, there is some confluence here. Like, if you just eyeball where this 3,700 area is, it's pretty much the bottom of the range. It was support here, caught the big dump, and it's back here again. Uh, on a weekly closing basis, it looks more like resistance than it does support. Um, but similar consideration to BTC, right? If you get some sort of failed breakdown going on at this 36, 3700 handle, uh, SPX would be up for some relief and crypto would probably follow. Uh, I would be quite surprised if this previous dumps low doesn't get spiked. I think that's still in, depending on your data feed or wherever you look, but I think this is still kind of double bottomy. Um, I think if you want to be risk on crypto, the most explicit way I can put it is you want to see a poke below those lows that gets absorbed and then a move back within the range and at that point you've got some sort of invalidation and at least a bullish pattern that you've got a kind of double bottom failed breakdown reclaim of support and then we can push higher towards at least the 3900 handle if not kind of 4k round number as well and just this leg would probably be enough to give you some nice intra week or even intraday crypto rotations so personally i'm not too keen on just taking positions until this double bottom of some sort or even this weekly structure resolves 
the best case scenario or, or the one that would give me some intra-week risk appetite would be the aforementioned double bottom breakdown failure reclaim support and then we can sort of push higher that's probably a bit high but you know at least towards 4k uh the market where it is right now where it's below support and the double bottom hasn't been tested yet i, I want some signals and for me i just want to see what's below here and if there's a willingness to reclaim support once once those lows get spiked uh, obviously if um if pushing below this low just leads to a breakdown, that would be bad. I wouldn't have a kind of appetite for risk in that case. Uh, but at least I know what to look for. And what to look for, spike, reclaim support, and then we're in business. Otherwise, I think patience or doing nothing. Uh, and again, you can see how clear that is on the daily time frame and all kind of time frames align around this 3700 handle for the SPX. <clears throat> excuse me, the SPX. Um, one other kind of market dynamic to discuss is that while a lot of this dump was happening, like this leg here, uh, crypto was holding up relatively well. You can kind of just see very aggressive four or five down days in the S&P, uh, while Bitcoin kind of just held hit its range and went sideways. So you have SPX going down, uh, crypto going sideways. And so one argument could be that this is relative strength, right? That uh, equities are very weak, crypto held up. So, you know, the market crypto is stronger because it's normally correlated. It didn't go down and went sideways instead. And going sideways instead of going down is good and or strong. Uh, I think on, on its face, that makes sense. Uh, and it's no surprise that there are kind of value buyers at 18 to 19k BTC. Uh, but one thing to bear in mind in terms of how these market dynamics have played out is that more often than not, uh, crypto quote unquote relative strength has just been lag, right? So what you've had is SPX goes down, crypto goes sideways, and the expectation is, oh, this is relative strength, now crypto is going to go up. But then even if the SPX goes up, crypto just kind of catches up and goes down as well. So I don't think the relative strength, at least on this short time frame, is in itself a signal. It could be if the technicals align, but just on face value of equities down crypto sideways, historically, or at least recently, that hasn't been enough, and it's kind of just caught up later. So I still think some caution is warranted for that argument, and I'd rather see the bullish scenario I posted for SPX play out to get some more kind of signal confluence for the crypto idea. I don't think just taking the fact that we've gone sideways instead of down is good enough on its own. Um, that's at least my take there. As far as the calendar goes, we've got some things going on this week. So you can see the 26th today. Um, every, I think every day this week, we have some sort of FOMC member speaking. Um, so Bowman on Wednesday, I think Powell is speaking tomorrow. Uh, we've got some consumer confidence data later in the week. And I think there's PCE. Um, yeah, PCE on Friday. So there's certainly some sort of headlines, I'm sure, that will be short-term tradable or push markets around. But as far as macro goes, to be completely honest, uh, you know, the pound is breaking, FX looks precarious, uh, the Fed seems resolute in saying that there's going to be pain and they want to bring inflation down, even if, even if it has an adverse effect on the economy and asset prices, whatever it may be. So I think if you're looking for some sort of Fed pivot softening type of argument, I uh, will have to wait for the next core data uh, later on in kind of October. I don't think there's anything end of September, at least on my calendar, that would suggest, you know, any type of data that would shift that narrative. So I, I guess that's a fancy way of saying macro still sucks. Uh, and, and so we need to wait for at least decent technicals, a decent setup to justify sort of counter trend longs. So to summarize, uh, BTC still at range low, uh, not much going on. Um, if it fail, if it does a you know kind of failed breakdown pattern that's very impulsive, that would be good. Uh, if it just pops up on its own and the market goes up, I still think this mid 20k area is worth taking seriously, uh, and it's kind of a level to level type of approach. A uh, bigger picture in terms of what I really care about, what matters this week for me, is this SPX double bottom. Best case scenario, the market kind of spikes the double bottom, ends up reclaiming support at 3700s, and then we have a scenario to fill in some of this very kind of one-sided selling uh, that took place towards, you know, sort of this week and the end of last week. That would be the sort of best case scenario. Um, but in the absence of the market kind of probing and reclaiming support, if this doesn't happen, uh, I'm not too kind of crazy or optimistic or looking for setups. So really my focus this week is on this double bottom, ideally, Spike, reclaim support, we can go. If not, if it just breaks down, rolls over, whatever. Uh, I don't think the, the fact that crypto has shown relative strength in the form of going sideways is on its own enough uh, to compel me into action. So uh, I'm not going to repeat myself for the millionth time. I already feel bad for doing it so much. Uh, focus on the SPX. If that shows strength, crypto will probably follow given we already have some sign of relative strength. 
Uh, I think bigger, bigger picture zooming out, as much as macro might suck and all this other stuff may not be in our favor, the one thing we do have in our favor is that the SPX has been very good at trading very technically. So as long as you pay attention to the high time frame, sort of monthly, weekly, daily levels on the S&P, uh, you won't be caught completely flat footed. Uh, so that's why I've spent so much time saying the same thing in 20 different ways as far as this market goes. That's all from me. Hope that makes sense. Sorry for the latest update. Again, check out the FTX app for all your portfolio tracking and spot trading and no liquidations, <laughs> thankfully, needs. More content coming around that soon. Let me know what you thought of this video. I know it's sometimes very boring to just laser vision focus on one thing but a lot of the time at least for my trading style if i'm not doing very short term stuff uh, i just have a kind of theme i'm looking for for some portion of the week and that will set my bias and just that just this week that happens to be this very important double bottom structure at the at with the s p that i think will determine risk appetite more broadly this week that's all thank you for watching and make sure to go to trletter.com for our free weekly newsletter that will come out tomorrow morning if you watch this upon release every tuesday so sign up it's free all that good stuff that's all for me take care and i'll see you in the comments section bye bye